Hello there, my name's Lee. I'm the crazy old man. And I spent a lot of time in downtown Detroit and in the uh, neighborhoods seeing a lot of homeless people. I know a lot of homeless people. Living down downtown Detroit, I see people society has forgotten. Many good people walk right by the lost souls and do not see them. They may hear their words, but they do not listen. These are the lost souls of any city. Man with one leg and no wheelchair or crutches who hops to the place he sits and begs at. There is a young man whose wheelchair is converted into a small bed because he has no legs and it's easier to lie on his stomach and move the wheels on his set. There is a man with dirty dreadlocks in a wheelchair who goes to the back of restaurants and gets food left over. Most of the homeless that I've seen are victims of heroin addiction or crack. Many are alcoholics. Because their loss was due to their own actions, they cannot get aid anymore. Many homeless are there because they lost their jobs. Someone close to them or in many cases put out in the streets by the state when they should be in mental institutions. The following is a composite of the homeless person. I know many like him in many ways. A day in the life of a homeless person. I'm going to tell you about a day in the life of Joe Wino. Joe is a homeless drunk. At one time, he was a successful businessman. He lost his family in an auto accident. After the accident, he could not function. He started to drink to make the pain of his loss go away. He soon could not function at work and got fired. Then he lost his house and found himself in the streets. During the warm parts of the year, he sleeps on park benches, in alleys, or in abandoned buildings, bus stop shelters, or anywhere else he can lie down and go to sleep. During the winter, if the shelters are full, he tries to find something inside. may not be heated. He has some blankets to help keep the cold out of his body. All of his belongings are in a plastic bag. In the morning, he gets up heads for the garbage cans and the dumpsters. He looks for bottles that he can turn in for deposit money, food, or something to drink. He likes the dumpsters behind the restaurants because they sometimes have food, especially after meal times. If he is lucky, he will not have to spend money on food. That gives him more money for his liquid refreshment. Joe is at a bus stop, and when the bus comes, he gets on and asks if anyone can help him with bus fare. If there is a sucker, he gets the fare and drops off. He can't do this too often because each driver remembers him, and eventually he'll stop picking him up. When he gets enough for a cheap pint, he goes to the liquor store, buys the cheapest half pint he can find. Sometimes someone will take him to get food. Then he sells the food to buy more cheap booze. Many of those on the streets are drug addicts too. Some have lost limb or two because of their addiction. You see them on crutches and wheelchairs and hopping around on one leg. During the day they are downtown begging from the office workers and shoppers. If they aren't causing any problems, the police look the other way. 
Joe's day is spent walking, begging, checking garbage, and having an occasional nap. As night falls, he starts to think about where he will sleep. He finds a place in an abandoned building. He has a bottle that, that he will drink until he passes out. If he is lucky, he will wake up in the morning. Maybe if he is lucky, he will not wake up in the morning. If it's cold, he may freeze to death. He may be killed by another homeless person or some sick killer. He may die from the cheap booze. How lucky he is depends on his living or if his death is painless. No one will miss him. No one will care. He is lost and forgotten soul. Maybe he has gone on and someone may wonder, what happened to that bum that used to beg here? Maybe one person will miss him. I may miss him. When we go, if one person realizes that we are gone, then we are not totally lost. I wrote that in 2002. And since then I've seen more. And there are more homeless people now than there were back then. People have lost their jobs and given up. And they end up in the streets. They lose their families. And then there's families out there who don't have anywhere to live. Usually they can find a shelter, but sometimes they live in their car. And if they still have a car, there are a lot of reasons for being homeless. Many of them are not the fault of the homeless person, especially now. We've got people who had good jobs who lost their jobs thanks to our government giving the jobs to other countries thanks to NAFTA something has to be done our government has to be told that they are messing with the wrong people. We have to vote out the people that are doing us harm, which is most of the people in office. I had a lot of faith in President Obama, but now that faith is gone. President Obama is following the lead of George Bush. I wonder if he knows how dumb he is in doing so. I wonder if he really cares. It seems like the rich folks got to him. All through his campaign he was saying how the little people are where he's getting his funding and that uh, he is a candidate for the people. He may have been the candidate for the people, but he's not the president for the people. Something has to be done. Next election comes along, the person running against him will probably be worse than Obama. But maybe just maybe there'll be some independent running that can change things. Maybe, just maybe, there'll be independent people running for Congress that can change things. Republicans and Democrats, when you get right down to it, there's no difference. Sure, they fight and argue all the time, 
But I bet you behind the scenes, they're buddies. It's probably like the wrestlers. On TV, they hate each other, beat on each other, and off camera, they're out drinking together and having fun. Something has to be done, though. We are being sold down the river by our government and by our president. All that money going to wars that are based on lies. All that money going to Israel. Israel could very easily live without our money. Israel is going good. They do not have poverty. And something has to be done to stop letting them be their slave. Because that's what we are. We pay Israel and then they borrow money from us too. And then they turn around and pay off our congressman, our president, through paying off the party and political contributions. They're using our money to bribe us, to bribe our people. If we could stop the wars, stop giving that money to Israel, we probably would have less crime, more people with jobs, and things would be pretty good out there. It would be less poverty, better education, and our taxes would go down too. So think about it. Get involved. Join protest groups. Get out there and tell the people you're fed up with it. Like the TV show, the movie. Mad as hell, I'm not going to take it anymore. That's what you got to do. You got to be mad as hell and don't take it anymore. Thank you.